Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we will be discussing a case of a two-year-old girl who presented to ER with complaints of intermittent episodes of abdominal pain since three days and multiple episodes of vomiting since two days. On pad triangle assessment, appearance, child was crying and restless, breathing, there was no audible uh, abnormal breath sounds or any signs of increased work of breathing. Circulation, there are central and extremities were pink in color. On primary assessment, the airway is patent, no pulling of secretions or gurgling sounds or strider. Breathing, uh, respiratory rate is 28 per minute. Saturation of 99% on room air. Air entry bilaterally equal, no added sounds. Circulation, pulse rate of 110 per minute. BP of 160. And uh, uh, capillary refilling time was 2 seconds. Disability, uh, the child was irritable and crying. She was moving all four limbs. GRBS was 98. And exposure weight was uh, 12 kg with temperature of 98. Uh, we gave an injection uh, PCM uh, 180 mg IV was given with the injection MSZ 3 mg. Okay. And uh, coming to uh, second. Okay. So, two year old, since how many days the child having abdominal pain? Three days she is having abdominal pain, intermittent episodes. Intermittent episode of abdominal pain, two year old child coming to the AD. Then what are the other associated symptoms that you Multiple have? Multiple episodes of vomiting. Multiple also. episode of vomiting. And the greenish discoloration, bile staining was also there. Bile stain vomitus, then okay. stool. Stool was normal. She is passing stools but minimally passing it. It has the frequency of come down. Frequency has come down. Frequency of come down. So, a two-year-old child with this background history, any fever? No fever history. Of no fever. fever history as such. So, abdominal pain, vomiting, and how was the uh, episodes that is happening? Initially, how was the symptoms? Later on, like since last two days, you said. So, what is the uh, severity of the disease Initial to start off with? Initially, she had a less frequency and mm. it was mild, only pain was there. Okay. Then she started to the increase uh, in the frequency and the crying episodes started to increase. Okay. She used to hold her abdomen and used to cry more and more. Frequently. More and more. So, but uh, when the episode is not there, she is like completely calm and okay. Okay. So, as per the pediatric assessment triangle, the child was irritable. Irritable. The child was irritable and maybe because of the pain. But otherwise, the color of the child, everything was okay. Was Capillary filling time was again normal and whitely, uh, except stable. for the pain, she was quite stable. stable. What was your examination of the abdomen revealed? Examination of abdomen, it was soft, mild tenderness was present, but the child was already crying and irritable. So as such, we couldn't elicit, but no palpable mass when all was not there. Why palpable mass you want to look in for? Uh, we are, uh, since she is uh, two year old mm. and uh, she is coming to intermittent episodes of abdominal pain, we are suspecting intersusception also. Okay, so, so intersusception. Part of that, we have checked uh, for palpable mass in the any So, where you will get a palpable Most mass? Usually in the right upper quadrant. Right upper quadrant. quadrant, you can uh, get maybe it sometimes posteriorly also you might be able to see, but routinely a right upper quadrant is a classical description yeah. of uh, intersusception. Okay, so so, uh, how will you uh, go about this patient in the emergency room? Uh, first, since the patient is uh, widely stable, we can uh, proceed with the ultrasound. Uh, we took ultrasound, uh, it showed. See, our challenge is here, I will just say the pain management. That's pain the first thing. Pain management and uh, vomiting. vomiting. And yes. you have to assess the dehydration status. Yes. So, fluid management, electrolyte management, pain management. Pain these man are the three things immediately we need to do. And we need to look in for why the child is having these symptoms. That is the next, you need to have the diagnostic evaluation. So, the first thing that you went ahead, uh, you went, as you said, you were given paracetamol. Mm -hmm. So, what are the options for a child? Uh, like this child, we can, the child will not be tolerating oral feeds. What are the other options? Options that you can give instead of oral. Uh, you can give suppositories, suppositories. but uh, here uh, one most important thing we are suspecting in GI pathology. So that is the reason if there is loose tools and all again it is not possible. So other one is we can think of giving suppository and oral feed the child is not tolerating. So you have end head with the an, uh, IV axis yeah. and you have got an paracetamol to be given. So 15 milligram per kilogram uh, body weight. So 180 mg. Yeah. What was the expected body weight for a two year old child? Somewhere around 12 yeah. to 13 kg. Yeah. So that would have been the expected body weight for the child. So depending upon that you have given around 180 mg mm -hmm. of paracetamol. So that is one thing that you have done. The next thing is that hydration status. Hydration. How was the hydration oral, status? Uh, oral cavity was uh, dry. Okay. Was dry. Okay. The child is dehydrated. dehydrated. So she is not tolerating oral feed. Okay. So we have to say whether it is some dehydration or severe dehydration or moderate dehydration. So what category you will put? Yeah, only some dehydration you can give because. What was the skin trigger? Skin trigger uh, not much uh, retraction is there. 
it was there it was going back immediately going back. immediately yeah. so the child is not in shock so that is not one thing that we have seen there is no hypotension as such but there is some dehydration so some dehydration how will you tackle you need to hydrate the child so how will you calculate the fluid requirement for this child i am asking you to start on iv fluid so what fluid you will choose what rate you will give for this child no. that's the most important thing that okay. uh, see ultrasound i can get a diagnosis but the, as an ed physician we should know what fluid you need to start see when you are deciding to start on a fluids 1 2 3 what are the thing why whether you need an hypotension correction no here you doesn't need a hypotension correction you need to correct the dehydration only since the child is not tolerating oral fluids we can go with an yeah. iv fluid okay. what iv fluid you want what iv fluid you want the questions asked will be whether you need to give only hydration electrolyte collection needed to be done and whether energy also glucose is also important so whether you need to give that also because the child is not taking anything orally also so depending on all those things you need to select an iv fluid so what will be an ideal ideal iv fluid for this child it will be oral or isolate there are different for the children when it comes there are totally different perspectives you need to think there is something called as an isolate p so that is one thing p for pediatrics it's basically like an rl for an adult patient you can have isolate p for children that is one thing but the problem is that dextrose content may not be sufficient enough so what we can do we can go for half dns so that is one option that you can go is half dns and again the child is having multiple episodes of vomiting so potassium might be low so if it is there hypokalemia you can add on uh, kcl into half dns so that is one thing that you can start off with then what should be the rate of fluid administration how much you should be giving the fluid what is holiday cigar formula what is holiday cigar formula the simple thing for a 10 kg individual we need 1 liter so that is the maintenance fluid that is required so for a 2 kg uh, what is the weight of this child you can take it as 12 kg so for first 10 kg it is 1000 ml for the next you have to calculate 50 you have to add 50 to it for every increase in kg so the child will get around 1100 ml of fluid that should be divided over 24 hours so 1100 divided by 24 hours that is the maintenance fluid that is child is required but after each episode of vomiting you need to replace that also the child is having loose stools also we need to replace that also so we need to correct there is no hypotension so we are not correcting the hypotension if there is hypotension what do you need to do you need to give 20 ml per kg of fluid bolus then you need to give maintenance fluid on over the top of that then over the top of that you have to look for what x whatever the fluid loss that has happened you need to replace that also so 1100 divided by 24 hours so uh, divided by 24 uh, you can imagine somewhere around it will be how much 55 55 oh, ml or something like that you need to start so that is a rate by which you need to start the child on fluid correction and imagine that what you need to achieve we need to achieve hydration you need to achieve glucose because the child is not taking orally and you need to correct the electrolyte also so these are the things that are concerning for us so you have started you have to start out any of these three things now the next important thing is that we have to come to a diagnosis so what will be the differential diagnosis for a child that is coming with abdominal pain for a 2 year old child a girl child why i am specifying it is a girl child male child you can have different uh, pathophysiology you need to think in for for a girl child what are the differential diagnosis that you will consider for a 2 year old coming to the ed Uh, we can uh, suspect it you can start with the most common one and you can go to the most okay. least one also gastroenteritis okay it can be a gastroenteritis but there is no loose stools no history as it so it can be a simple gastritis. gastritis so most common can be simple gastritis uh, but again the pain per se as such that you are giving for two days a gastritis may not last to that extent so that is one thing then you can acute gastritis we have put as the one differential diagnosis then Uh, colitis colitis as such there is no bowel inflammation bowel. as such no you don't you don't have any loose stools or anything that is supporting Meckles to that diverticulum Meckel's diverticulum Meckel's diverticulitis okay uh, but uh, it can be one of the differential diagnosis then you said the most common one indusception indusception see the classical triad of the so called indusception of having an abdominal pain a mass palpable and red current jewel stool you just get maybe in one third or 25 percentage of the patients only every patient you will not get so we keep that because the age group is very typical so what is the age group that is typical for indusception it is from 5 to 6 months to 
two years is the peak till five years also they can come up with industrial solution so that is the thing that you need to remember that is one of the most common reason by which these children will come to the ed one differential i will say you need to keep is industrial solution this is the classical triad that you might get but uh, you might not get in every patient also so and maybe a little bit ahead maybe mesenteric lymphadenitis this can be the another differential diagnosis that you can keep so most common ones we have to think maybe an uh, male child you have to think of a testicular torsion so every boy child that is coming to the ed with abdominal pain definitely the test is needed to be evaluated so that is the most important thing so being a girl child this will be our differential diagnosis so with this in background what is the most non invasive investigation that we can do and which has got very good sensitivity is also is an ultrasound abdomen so ultrasound abdomen routinely x ray as such we are not recommending for any of this disease so like in adult patient we go for an x ray unless and until you are suspecting an intestinal obstruction intestinal obstruction as due to a complication that has happened so when we are not suspecting an bowel obstruction we will not uh, ask for an x ray but otherwise an ultrasound has got a very good uh, tool to evaluate why the reason is there for abdominal pain so you have said you went ahead with an ultrasound abdomen ultrasound abdomen showed a bowel within bowel in subhepatic region with uh, 2 into 3 cm size Okay. Like the colic, uh, so that is the most common area where you will have uh, indusception. Is the iliocolic junction is the most common area, and you have uh, clinically found out and on ultrasound also found out that there is an indusception that has been seen. So now we have confirmed. Okay, the patient is having indusception. So even if it is indusception or not an indusception, that initial treatment part is the same. our hydration part hydration. our electrolyte correction part and our energy requirement and keeping the child on nilpar early again one of the most important for any gi emergencies when we suspect we want to have an intervention we will keep the child on npo you want any other investigation for your diagnosis at this point of time if we are suspecting any perforation then as you no we don't have see any perforation no. right now an ultrasound is equally enough, enough a good enough for a diagnosis of indusception we doesn't need any further investigation usually what are the triggers for an indusception indusception status okay immunization status you can ask for but in this style I, at present i am not suspecting anything vaccine related illness yeah, recent viral infection reason any infection usually can trigger a disruption that is only maybe there is no relation because children are very prone to develop this infection at any point of time maybe that is one history that you can ask you look into the history there is nothing much but this child group is having a higher risk of having uh, this so similarly if i can give you an history the, the child is coming with you an history of like in 2 months after birth what will be your differential diagnosis the two same child after birth abdominal pain it can be a necrotizing colitis cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis okay necrotizing enterocolitis necrotizing enterocolitis diarrhea maybe i can tell you maybe uh, one month within birth you can just gastric outlet obstruction so these are the pyloric stenosis all those things you need to remember pyloric stenosis that's are the most common uh, in the initial age group but once it is crossing like 5 months 6 months until 2 years until 5 years you can consider indusception as one of the most important differential diagnosis so you have diagnosed an indusception what do you need to do you need to do reduce the indusception usually it will be done pneumatic reductions can be done so what was done for this child for this child pneumatic reduction was done okay and uh, so uh, what is the potential complications of you are not detecting an indusception uh, what will happen to the bowel is bowel ischemia can happen bowel ischemia can happen perforation. and it can perforate perforation. and can go into complication peritonitis yes, and all those things it can cause so the immediately the child should be taken for pneumatic reduction pneumatic. and what are the risk factors previous history of uh, indusception that is one of the major risk factor you have to ask for this history the child had anything previously so uh, the most important thing the what what we need to we need to immediately reduce the indusception and most common area for having indusception is the iliocolic junction that is what has happened to this patient uh, what What has been done for him? Pneumatic reduction with air was done. Okay. Got reduced. Okay. The patient has asymptomatic and discharge. Uh, asymptomatic and yes. discharge. You want to start on any antibiotics? No, no antibiotic required. If no. there is any perforation and planning for surgery and all, we can start. Okay. Actually, pneumatic reduction doesn't require any antibiotic. Yeah, you can discharge the child for after observation. The child can be discharged. So. Uh, the most important one differential diagnosis is what we have discussed is indusception today so uh, the classical triad of what you have the abdominal pain 
and uh, a mild mass palpable usually in the right upper quadrant followed by red current jelly stool so that will be the history but one third patients only you will be able to see once you have such a patient our key things will be pain management we into hydration keeping them npo and electrolyte management then confirm the diagnosis by doing an ultrasound and then followed by a pneumatic reduction so when you want further investigation and in ultrasound in is inconclusive you are not able to find any diagnosis from your ultrasound then you need to explore why the style then maybe blood investigation okay. look for any infections and all you can do but routinely this is what is generally required for a management of indices anything that you want to add on to this okay, okay. fine thank you, thank you.